Yeah. I'm on the x-axis. Okay, so I'm just taking the x-boundaries. Is that okay? So we're going not to pi oh, on 4. Now, what I'm after here now is... I'm going to go ahead and write pi y squared dx, right? I know some people, and I've mentioned this when we first learned it, I know some people like to put that pi out the front. I am going to do that in a second. But I like keeping this here, because what is this? What does this represent? What is it? Where did these pieces come from? Yeah, it's tiny cylinders, right? Tiny, tiny cylinders. Pi r squared h. Yes? Do you remember that? Okay. So now... I'll put that pi out the front. It's still from 0 to pi on 4. And of course, y squared in this case is? Y squared is? It's sex squared. OK, that's much happier looking, right? So now I can integrate. This is pi by 10x from 0 to pi on 4. And now I'm just going to evaluate. I'm getting 10 of pi on 4, which is 1. Minus 10 of 0, which is 0. Okay, that's a bit better. That's not the answer, by the way. That is not the answer. Oh, units cubed. It's a volume, right? So, I'm, I'm going to say, by the way, um, I've mentioned this before. Derivatives and integrals, strictly speaking, are not units. They don't have units on them. So, pi is this number. I'm going to conclude. Therefore, the volume is. Um, you won't be like penalized or anything if all you do is tack on a units cubed there, um, because we get it. You're writing. It's a volume. That's the basic idea. But I like to do it correctly. So the volume is something separate, and I use the integral to get that. Okay. Right. Once we got the right question, it was a lot easier. Let's move on. Uh, indefinite. Definite. Sorry. We're going to do chain rule and identities, and you'll see they, they flow together quite neatly. Okay, uh, here we go. The integral of cos 2x. Okay, now again, just like I did with the indefinite integrals, I'm going to write this in such a way to take advantage of the fact that I know my derivatives really well. What derivative would have led to something like this? I would have expected a 2 out the front, wouldn't I, right? So if I had had a 2 cos 2x, you're like, oh look, there's the inside of that. So of course I can't just put in a 2 because I want to. I need to compensate, right? So there comes that half at the front. And now that I see this, the half remains there. 2 cos 2x simply came from sine 2x, right? <coughs> and don't forget your constant, okay? And of course, again, you can check it. It's so easy to check. You used to do your derivatives to check. I encourage you to do that because the more you practice, I know it sounds weird, but the more you practice switching back and forth, the better you'll get at distinguishing between the two and knowing when to do one and when to do the other. Oh my god, so like, when you have like cos 3x or cos 4x, the derivative is just the same, but with like 3x, like, the other one's okay, so one. Sorry, yeah. uh, I just had a moment there, because I just realized something. Well, when you're doing chain rule here, right, yeah, good. You're seeing the parallel, like, it's like, oh, that's just the inside function, right? So yeah. therefore, that, that number will just hop out the front. Um, just like it did with polynomials. Okay, now when you have a look at this one, students get twisted around when they look at these because it just looks funny. You wouldn't believe the number of people who try and do an expansion here. You can't do it that way, by the way. I just, just don't know why you would. Okay, I'm going to treat this as there's a chain ruling operation here. So I want to write this in such a way to make the derivative more obvious. Okay, so what's the derivative of the inside function here? It's just a negative one, right? So I was kind of expecting that there would be a negative one there. Right? So since there's a negative there, there, there ought to be a negative out the front. Okay? So now that I have that negative there, what's going to happen to this guy? Side. Negative cos is going to turn into... Now, just watch out, right? It's kind of funny because here there's like a double, 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 triple, quadruple negative, or whatever it is, okay? Because cos, right, came from sine. Right, it came from sine. So therefore, if I wrote sine of pi on 4 plus c, well, it doesn't matter what Just check this for a second. Does it work out? Does it send us back where I came from? Think about it. Yes. Yes. So here you have to be careful. Refer back to your original indefinite integrals, right? No. Regular sine, regular sine turns into cos. But this is not regular sine. This is sine with chain rule involved, right? So this minus sine, where does it come from? 
it comes from the inside function. It doesn't come from this guy. Does that make sense? Okay. And I can just verify this, right? If I differentiate this back, a negative sign will climb out the front for chain rule to cancel that, and you end up here, right? Because sign will just turn into cross. Yeah. Good question. Um, can we take advantage of the fact that cross is a Okay. So if I wanted to, right? If I wanted to, I could do this another way. So I could say, hey, hey, hold on a second. Cos of x is equal to cos of minus x because cosine is uh, an, an even function. It's reflective across the y-axis. So in fact, this is also equal to this. Okay. Now what happens when I write the next line? When I'm doing the reverse chain rule here, there's still chain rule happening. It's just that the derivative is 1, right? So this is going to be sine of x minus pi on 4 because I have a new inside function plus my constant. Is this right? Okay, now be careful, be careful. We can, but it's not because I can take the minus out, it's because sine is what kind of function? It's odd, right? So f of x is minus f of minus x. It's because of the symmetry that I can take advantage of that. Okay.